Good morning, good evening, wherever you are across the world and the universe. Welcome to my Quantum Living Podcast, where we talk about anything and everything at the intersection of science and spirituality. I'm your host, Anna Anderson, quantum coach, Reiki master, and theta meditation teacher. Above all, an inquisitive soul. Since my early childhood, I've been on a quest to find out how life really works. And the best clue I've got so far is the sacred alchemy of physics and metaphysics, science and spirituality, mind, body and spirit, which together reveal the truths we all want to know. Who am I? Why am I here? What life is all about? How can I live my life to realize my highest potential with fulfillment, prosperity and joy? How can I manifest what I want? I'd love to share with you on this podcast what I have learned over the years and bring you inspiring conversations with my guests who will share their expertise as well. Welcome to the brand new, exciting season four of Quantum Living. Okay, let's begin. Hello and welcome back to Quantum Living. While many people these days are open to the notion of reincarnation and soul journey, as it gives us some comfort that we will move on at the moment of our death and won't simply cease to exist, these are still difficult concepts for us to grasp. Past lives, life between lives, future and concurrent lives, some might even say, enough, (laughs) I don't want to know about my other lives, I've got enough problems in this one. And yet, it is actually in our interest to gain some insights into and information from our other incarnations, as they can help us solve many issues we are having in this lifetime. Yep, everything happens for a reason, and the divine design of the creation and soul evolution is just perfect, waiting for us to reach out and discover how we can benefit from the sneak glimpses of what we were up to centuries ago on other planets in other universes. It's sort of like sitting a written exam, with all the books you want open and available, with information that will help you pass the exam with less pain and trepidation. The only tricky part is to know which book to open, as there are so many piling up on your desk. And let's face it, you only have a limited time to come up with all the answers. As this is such a great topic in my exploration of quantum living, I have invited a top-notch expert in this field to shed some light on the mystery of the soul journey. My special guest today is Dr. Linda Beckman. Dr. Beckman is an expert teacher, author, licensed psychologist, and regression therapist with 44 years of private practice experience. In 1993, Dr. Beckman took a strong interest in past life regression as a cutting-edge form of cognitive behavioral therapy and has since guided countless individuals in regression hypnotherapy to access their past lives and life between lives with outstanding results. Dr. Bachman studied with and taught alongside the late Dr. Michael Newton, author of the seminal book Journey of Souls, and co-created and served on the founding board of the Society for Spiritual Regression, now the Newton Institute, as membership chair and president. She became an international expert on reincarnation, soul journeys, and past life regression. A widely sought-after guest speaker, she has been featured on Coast to Coast AM and on Gaia, and is a frequent guest on numerous radio shows. Dr. Bachman is the author of three inspiring books, Bringing Your Soul to Light, Healing Through Past Lives and the Time Between, The Evolving Soul, and Souls on Earth. In 1997, Dr. Backman and her husband, Dr. Earl Backman, established the Raven Heart Center, a mystery school in Boulder, Colorado, dedicated to guiding individuals to discover their soul path. And now she joins me, of course, from Boulder, Colorado. 
Hello, Linda. Welcome to Quantum Living. It's a pleasure to have you on my show. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure and an honor to be with you. Thank you. Well, we have so much to talk about. So let's start from the beginning. How did you become an expert in past life and between lives regression therapy? Well, to make the story not terribly long, Anna, um, in 1993, I was in private practice as a psychologist, um, doing, for the most part, uh, broad-based general counseling, even though I did a lot of work with grief counseling and, and chronic pain and that sort of thing. Prior to 1993, I did not understand reincarnation. I didn't understand the soul. That was just sort of not, you know, what I was uh, led to understand until 1993. And in in April um, of that year, my original psychologist colleague died, sadly from a human standpoint, died from a type of lung cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in my middle 40s when that happened. And when he passed, two experiences happened for me that were completely, in my conscious awareness, completely new. Um, He was talking to me from the other side, which initially I thought was very strange. And, And yet in some, you know, odd way, it wasn't strange. I could feel his energy. Um, It didn't feel dangerous or hurtful. And I knew just a little bit about reincarnation. I also sensed that often in the darkness of being in bed at night or in the early morning, I, it was almost primarily, I would say, clairvoyant. I felt as though I was being presented with scenes of past lives and the soul of my colleague uh, was in those lives with me. So I thought, you know, as a as a licensed psychologist, I thought, well, um, either this is extremely bizarre and there's something <laughs> wrong and all of that, or there's something to this. And I was quite fascinated. So just to finish the story, because I think this additional piece was all planned. I think the whole thing was planned at the soul level. Um, I asked my husband to sit down. My husband, who I'm still married to. Um, My husband and I had been married for 20 or 25 years at that point. Um, Both of us are, we were not consciously spiritual, but we've always been sort of progressive and liberal. Uh, My husband was an academic professor. So I asked Earl to sit down and I told him what was going on for me. He had known my colleague. They were friends who played golf together at times. Um, I explained to Earl what I was experiencing and Anna Earl looked back at me and he said, you know, oh, okay. And I said, you don't think this is strange? And he said, no, actually I don't. And I said, why don't you think this is strange? And basically what Earl said that day in April of 93, Earl said, you know, I guess I repressed something that happened to me as a boy. And Earl said, now I remember, and we're both about the same age, so Earl's in his middle 40s at this point. Um, Earl said, now I recall that when I was a boy growing up, I remembered my past lives in great detail. Um, Earl, Earl said, I knew they were my lives. Don't ask me how I knew. But he said, I never told anyone because I thought they would think I was a very strange child. So that was permission for me to move forward with my interest in soul and reincarnation and, you know, more and more. Beautiful. You studied and worked alongside the late Dr. Michael Newton. Could you tell us about that experience and how it has influenced your work in this field? Because as I understand, that was the next step, if you like, or the next phase in your career. Yes, it was part of the next phase. The actual next step was um, I found, b- before I learned about Michael Newton, and, and Michael Newton's first book came out in 1994. So um, in late 93, I found a regression organization that had conferences 
and um, offered training in past life regression. And I began to train in past life regression. Then probably somewhere around 97 or so, um, uh, maybe 96, uh, I discovered Michael Newton's first book, Journey of Souls. And I read it. I was fascinated. And uh, actually, back then, I was invited to, like you, um, to host a, a radio program. And, and, and back at that stage of, of this type of program, it was all done literally uh, uh, by phone on a, an actual radio station versus streaming, as we do today. And so um, I started looking for uh, authors of spiritual concepts to be my guests. And I had people like Dr. Brian Weiss. Um, and and then Dr. Michael Newton was one of my guests. And so that's how I met Michael. Um, it wasn't until about 1998 or so, maybe 99, that uh, Michael decided it was time to start training people in his type of work. Mm-hmm. So um, he encouraged me to take his first training. And we might say the rest was sort of history. I uh, <laughs> took, took his first training. And um, he was my mentor. And then we were colleagues teaching what Michael called life between lives, spiritual regression. I co-taught alongside Michael Newton. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Now, the knowledge of reincarnation and soul journey was well known to many ancient civilizations for thousands of years. At some point, it was, as we know, suppressed as esoteric knowledge available only to priests, shamans, and those in contact with the spirit world, so to speak, for a very long time. To experience the renaissance in modern times with quantum physics, bridging the gap between science and spirituality in particular. How do you think this knowledge was originally acquired? Was it through near-death experiences of individuals, spiritual insights? What do you think? Mm, That's a very wonderful question. Um, Well, I, I think we as spiritual people like you and me and many others Um, and probably all of your listeners, um, we know that the oldest spiritualists, the oldest spiritual people were indigenous cultures. Um, And it's my understanding that no one really knows how far back in history um, indigenous cultures existed. And of course, they existed in many parts of the world. Um, and, and of course, continue to exist. So tribal cultures, um, I, I believe, uh, through their ability to use in, use intuition and tap into this content, um, various tribal cultures around the world began to understand um, that intuition can assist us to know who we've been before, where we come from, and and that sort of thing. Absolutely, yes, I would agree. You have gained a lot of information from your clients under hypnosis about the soul type's origin, the soul archetypes, soul journey, and our purpose as a soul, which are the core elements of who we are as spiritual beings. Could you talk to this, please? And I'm also curious Have you had your own direct insights from the spirit and whether there were any differences on any particular points or detail comparing to what you were hearing from your clients? Big question. Um, So what happened for me in the beginning as, as I began to guide first, as I said, past life regression, and then studying with Michael Newton, learning how to go beyond past life, which is the type of regression uh, modality that that Michael Newton 
um, used and taught. I think one of the reasons I love regression work is uh, actually two reasons I love regression work. One, the information comes through the client. And while there are many wonderful channels and mediums on our planet, and I have visited many times with channels and mediums, um, I find it extremely valuable for the client to discover their own soul level information, almost as a visceral experience during the regression. And so I think that that is key. So what happened for me as I began to move into the world of regression and leave behind um, conventional psychology, um, and, and I was probably, I spent 12 to 15 years as a conventional psychologist, but as I moved into regression work, and began to guide clients, over time, it became week in and week out. It became multiple times a week, as it has been for many, many years. I think of it as a case study method of research, because just like Michael Newton did his research, if 10 of my clients or 20 of my clients are giving me a similar type of information, and that those clients don't know each other, then there must be some validity to what I'm learning. And I'll just speak briefly uh, about the types of souls or soul origin, and we can go more deeply into that if you want. Mm -hmm. As I started to guide clients in the regression mode and tool of Michael Newton's, and of course, I've tweaked it over the years because I studied with Michael back in the late 90s. As I started guiding clients, I began to discover that there are essentially three different, we could call them types of souls, we could call it soul origin, that all basically means the same thing. So I realized I had clients that were souls created to primarily have their uh, incarnations, their embodied lives on earth. And that that type of soul, I call an earth-based soul. And an earth-based soul is simply a soul that evolves lifetime to lifetime to lifetime, almost ad nauseum, we might say, on earth primarily. So that's an earth-based soul. Then I began to have many clients, which I continue to still have many clients like what I'm about to describe. These are clients whose souls were not created to function easily on earth. Mm -hmm. These are souls that were created um, to come from somewhere else in the universe um, other than the spiritual realm of earth. So these are souls, the term I was given through regression was interplanetary soul. So an interplanetary soul is a soul that's created to operate um, somewhere in the universe. It could be a planet, it could be a star system, it could be interdimensional space without density. And those souls don't evolve through Earth incarnation primarily, those souls evolve at their home location in the universe because they come from a healthy location in the universe. And I think we all know, uh, those of us as you know, listeners, um, we're in human bodies. So we all know there are issues and unresolved problems on our planet. Yeah. So I have worked with innumerable clients that are interplanetary. Yes. And I've learned a lot about those souls. Um, I asked my guides at one point. So spiritual guides, it, it, it took me years to learn how to sort of talk to my guides in my head, but I gradually figured out how to do that. I asked my guides at one point, so why are 50 to 60% of my clients, spiritual guides, why are these interplanetary souls? Mm. And basically my guide said, Linda, because Earth needs more interplanetary souls. Interplanetary souls are highly evolved. And we are 
working to have more, I call them IP souls, interplanetary souls. We need more IP souls on earth because they are so wise and they help, uh, we might say, push the envelope of, of advancement of humanity. So Linda, we want you to understand these souls and be able to support them because many IP souls in body on earth find it difficult to be on earth. Mm -hmm. So that's what led to me understanding more about IP souls and writing my third book that is completely about um, interplanetary souls. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Speaking of the soul journey, I believe that every soul from its inception needs to go through all the levels of consciousness on its evolution pathway. So we start as minerals and crystals, then progress to the plant kingdom and animal kingdom, making our way up from the simplest to more advanced species. And finally, to the human form that's on Earth. For example, uh, <laughs> I often dream of running on all four like a wild horse. And this is a very strange and a very strong sensation. And <laughs> whenever I eat lychee fruit, you know, the little sweet lychee fruit, which I really love, every time I get a vivid memory of being a little monkey <laughs> eating lychees somewhere and we know that lychees are native to Southeast Asia, so most likely I was at some point of my soul journey, a little monkey somewhere in India or China. So I find it really fascinating that we can retain memories of our past existences, if that's obviously how it happens, going all the way to those early consciousness levels that for one reason or another are so strongly linked with my current consciousness, that whenever there is the right association, I get this memory or I have those dreams. So what I would like to ask you, other than dreams and actual memories, and I might also ask you for a quick feedback on my experiences, what are some common clues of the influence of our other lives on this lifetime? For example, recognition of other souls, both positive and negative. Could you speak to this? Well, I think there are many avenues, we might say. Uh, uh, I often call it past life bleed through, meaning how in life today, how do uh, some of the experiences of our past lives bleed through into our current life? And so I think there are many different ways. You've you've mentioned one, and that is people in our life. Um, people we meet, and we have no reason to be uncomfortable around them, but instantly we're uncomfortable. People we meet, and it's completely the opposite. We're just instantly comfortable with them. If, if there's time, it reminds me of uh, a memory that came to me Mm -hmm. At a certain point when our son was about ready to marry the woman who's actually been his wife now for 20 years. But so people is one, fears, unexplained anxieties, phobias, also the reverse of that. Things we love, like certain kinds of music, certain parts of the world, uh, certain eras of history certain, you know, just areas of study that are tied to our past lives. So, you know, it's interesting. I, I sometimes will say to clients or if I'm giving a talk or something, I'll say, all right, imagine you were going to go to a costume ball and you needed to dress either like a, a figure in history or a time period in history. If they if they choose to dress like, you know, Benjamin Franklin as an example, that doesn't necessarily mean they were Benjamin Franklin. That may mean they had some association 
with that person. You know, so think about eras of time, skills that you have that you don't know where they came from. Mm -hmm. You've never studied a certain type of art, and yet you know a lot about it, and and that's one of your pastimes. So I definitely think our past lives bleed through into our current life. Mm -hmm. So I guess the phenomenon of déjà vu also comes into this category when we go somewhere for the first time in this lifetime and we just feel like, oh gosh, I've been here before. And we have no recollection, but it everything feels so familiar. Y y yes, or the complete reverse of, oh, I always wanted to travel to this city, so I take a vacation and I go to Prague in the Czech Republic, for example. I thought I mm -hmm. might love it, and we get there and we're filled with anxiety. Yeah. Then that probably means some event occurred there. I've had that happen for myself many times. And when I can, I try to tap into the past life in order to release the anxiety. Absolutely. Okay, so on this note, when we do feel unreasonable apprehension about someone or something, and by unreasonable, I mean not justified in the under the current circumstances, should we follow that instinct or that apprehension and not have any contact with the place or the person or the situation? Or should we, in spite of this feeling, or maybe because of it, persevere and still have the encounter and, and go through what we're planning to go through to see what happens? So which of the two positions would you say is more beneficial long term for us? I would say to persevere, because if we persevere, again, I've gone through this personally myself far more than once. If we persevere and we accept that it's probably past life because we have no other uh, reasonable explanation, if we persevere, then we're usually releasing the embedded trauma that resides in our soul energy. And so we're, we're, in many ways, we're releasing that imprint that exists within us. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a wonderful question, Anna, because uh, again, for me personally, I, I had that experience years ago, the first time we went to Israel and we went to Jerusalem and I was filled with anxiety and had to figure out why was I so you know nervous being there. And after that trip, we returned to Israel actually far more than once. And I didn't have the I didn't have the anxiety anymore because I have past lives in that part of the world. Right. Okay. And and it does make sense. Now, some people might say, well, what if this anxiety or apprehension about the person I've never met before in this lifetime is actually a warning mm. not to have anything to do with them because they might harm me. So is this the double-edged sword in this regard, or what do you think? There's many things to say about that. Usually, if we fear that someone we meet um, is going to harm us, because that harm came from past life, more often than not, that person isn't going to harm us in current life, because the the apprehension, the fear is tied to past life. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there are times when a past life event occurred, it's triggering current life apprehension for us. And the person that harmed us in the past life is unaware of what happened in the past life. And it, it, it retains the, you might say, attitude of negativity Mm -hmm. And so then I think if we feel that that ongoing attitude of negativity from someone else, then we step away from that person. And yeah. because that person isn't seemingly isn't ready to understand and release the past life circumstance.
Yes, thank you for that explanation. And also, I think that in those circumstances, the best way, because the question is, okay, so how do we know without going, actually going through the experience? So what I would think is to seek guidance from within, from our higher self, from our guides and teachers about the the current situation before us. Because whatever guidance will come from within, we can certainly trust, which leads me to my next question. Let's talk about the spiritual realm. Our guides and teachers in spirit, the angelic realm, spirit guides, other beings, our higher self, obviously, are they all here to help us and guide us in difficult circumstances? And how can we access their help? And do you agree, by the way, with what I've just said before? <laughs> To seek guidance. I, I, I certainly agree that seeking internal guidance, which, as you said, I agree, internal guidance comes from um, both our spiritual guides as well as our own higher self. So I, I certainly uh, agree. Yes, speak, uh, seek that intuitive um, guidance. Yes, totally, totally. Um, what I've learned over the years of guiding regression for such a long time with many, many clients is that we are never without at least a spiritual guide, if not more than one spiritual guide. And what I find to be um, true, if we talk about um, the three types of souls or soul origin of those terms mean the same. Mm -hmm. So um, I've explained earth-based souls and interplanetary or IP souls. There's a third um, soul origin or type of soul. And that is a soul that comes from the angelic realm. And the angelic realm serves the divine. People can choose their terminology that works for them. The source, great spirit, God, Um, An Eastern term that um, I have learned to use a great deal is the term is the Manu, M-A-N-U, that that being that high frequency guiding force that uh, uh, serves in the role of guiding humanity and the, the energy of the source or the Manu is pure love and compassion. That is the signature energy of the angelic realm and the signature energy of an angelic soul um, when they come into body on earth. So in regard to guides, spiritual guides, um, an earth-based soul, I would say virtually always, based on my experience with clients, an earth-based soul has a lead guide, a senior uh, spiritual guide, obviously operating functioning in the higher realm, in the spiritual realm, tied to earth. And an earth-based soul usually has a team. They usually have um, additional guides that serve different purposes. So it's usually a a group, a team for an earth-based soul. An interplanetary soul, and so just for listeners, just to reiterate, an interplanetary soul has a home location in the universe that is not tied to the we might say they're not tied to earth or not tied to the spiritual realm of earth. For an interplanetary soul, because IP souls are highly evolved, um, highly evolved when they come to earth, not a 10 on a scale of 10, but uh, at least a seven or an eight on a scale of 10, because an IP soul is already sufficiently or, or relatively speaking, highly evolved, they are either guided by a spirit guide that is separate from their soul, or at times they're guided by their own higher self because their own higher self is so highly evolved. So sometimes an IP soul, when I'm working with them in regression, we meet a guide that is the higher self of my client. And sometimes we meet a guide that is not the higher self. So that varies, uh, soul to soul. And then angelic souls um, do have a guide. And the angelic realm has um, angelic souls 
there is a certain degree of levels of evolution within the angelic realm, the highest level being the archangels. Some of my angelic realm clients are guided by an archangel. Some of them are guided by simply another angelic soul. So it varies. Um, I'll just add, I know this gets complicated. I have, because of my uh, regression, um, ongoing, ongoing regression, I have no doubt that some of the archangels do continue to incarnate on earth because I have worked with clients whose soul is an aspect. Uh, people probably understand, people that are listening. Um, we bring a slice of our soul into our incarnate bodies. The remainder of our soul is in the spiritual realm, um, and that's our higher self. I, I have worked with um, an aspect of the Archangel Michael soul. I've worked with an aspect uh, of the Archangel Gabriel soul. And these highly evolved souls have the ability also to incarnate in more than one body simultaneously. Ah. Interesting. Which is called split incarnation. Split incarnation. So I gather those particular individuals are involved in some sort of spiritual work on earth or not necessarily? Oh, good question. Um, Without naming names. No, no, no. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> um, no, they are sometimes involved in spiritual work, like some aspect of healing or ministry mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not um in involved in spiritual work okay but the core of the the core attitude the core orientation of those people that are angelic souls is this this it's always hard to put this into words love and compassion is the best way i can just describe it these tend to be people who are incredibly accepting kinds of people, not blindly accepting, but the most caring friend you'd ever want to have, the most benevolent individual that you come you might come across. Um, I, I'm I'm getting ready. I'm working on some writing, and the angelic soul content is not in any of my books. Um, and uh, so I'm working on putting some of that into writing, uh, using my client material to, uh, to sort of put that out for others. Yeah. Yeah. Anecdotally, I have heard quite a few times, or maybe I have read uh, in a number of, uh, of sources, that the highly evolved souls reside in the simplest forms of human existence. By the simplest, I mean not necessarily prominent, not being not celebrities, not you know great gurus, masters, etc. And one example that, that has been mentioned quite a few times is that your local gardener, just tending to the gardens all day, working with the plants, is quite often the most highly evolved soul whose purpose is nothing but radiate love and compassion and those higher frequencies. And when you get to meet them and speak with them and you look into their eyes, you know that you are in front of a highly, highly evolved soul. You know, they, they don't do much on the world scene. They they do regular jobs tending to the gardens, but their energy is just through the roof. Are you familiar with with this concept? Yes. I think what you're saying is valid, but at the same time, I believe there are some people who have more, we might say, 
I always like to talk about being out front or behind the scenes. And so you're talking about people that I would call behind the scenes kind of people. Um, I believe that's true. But at the same time, I do believe there are some people currently, as well as figures in history. So I'll use one historic figure that um, I've learned a certain amount about the soul, the soul of the one known as Gandhi, the soul of the father of modern India, the soul that uh, taught nonviolence. It is my understanding that is a highly evolved soul and that the soul of, and there are other souls like this, but just using this as an example, the soul of Gandhi continues to incarnate. And so we have some highly evolved souls that have been on earth, you know, been incarnating on earth long ago, Mm -hmm. but they continue to incarnate on earth. And some incarnations of that soul are absolutely behind the scenes types like the gardener some are also public figures and and so it varies and be, because and i think that in my opinion the because is terribly important we're at a point in my opinion in uh human the history of humanity that we must have some people with broad platforms who who push um better care of the planet who push democracy we have to have those souls mm-hmm. now i'll just make this make one more comment but um and bring it to current times i have some information that comes through regression some comes intuitively to me and a, a little bit from a capable channel or two that I trust. We think about um, the current president of the Ukraine, mm-hmm. President Vladimir Zelensky. Yeah. I strongly suspect that is a highly evolved soul that is is doing all that he can to push for democracy. So I think it's both is the answer be- behind and in front of the scenes. Yes. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with you. Thank you so much for that. Now, a moment ago, you mentioned God. In your view, and based on your knowledge and experience and your insight, in the whole of creation, is there one God or many gods? Ooh. What, again, wonderful question, Anna. It's my personal understanding that what we call God is a group soul highly, highly advanced. So, you know, I think that, of course, we have the Western religious cultures that that teach one God. We have Eastern cultures that, of course, teach many gods and goddesses. I, I think that as humans, we try to take this concept and put it into a package that we can each understand it. And so I accept because it's come through a number of regressions that what we call God is a, uh, a multiple soul, if you will. Beautiful. How can an insight into our past lives help us now in this lifetime, which is, I guess, a practical question that, that our listeners would, uh, would like to find out the answer to. Does it give us the emotional, physical, or spiritual healing? And could you give us a couple of interesting case studies from your work, how uh, the past life regression and insight into someone's past lives has helped them on their current journey? Well, if we we accept what I do believe is true, if we accept that we come into body um, on earth, to continue evolving. We come into body on earth. Earth is the, you might say, the school of evolution. Then the bottom line is there are two basic concepts that inform our evolution. And one of those concepts is is the very commonly used word karma, meaning in a past life on earth, we used our free will 
Or it could even be, honestly, it could be in a past life, not on earth. We also may have made choices that weren't the most useful choices. And so when we plan um, each life, and in, in the case of current life, when we plan our current life, we basically, we might say, script a life to work on past life karma or past life free will choices that weren't the most beneficial. We also bring into each lifetime, we also bring dharma or dharma meaning what did we accomplish in a past life, a skill, a benevolent relationship, that sort of thing. So we bring karma and dharma into each lifetime. And so if we understand our past lives, then we understand what is being reflected from our past lives in our current life that either is dharma we need to embrace, capability, skills that we need to embrace in current life, or karma we agreed to balance from past life. So when we know what we brought with us from the past, then we know how that affects our current life. So there there are just oh my goodness, so many examples. We might bring, and I'm, I'm sort of tapping in, I'm, I'm pausing because I'm just sort of tapping in, into my brain and, and my memory. I find, so here's a common theme. This is one piece that pops into my mind. Interesting to me, I have found that I'm often working with a female client and the female client in life today is not allowing herself to embrace her skills or embrace her uh, newfound type of work or new direction. And in some way, she's blocking herself. I find there are many um, women in life today who had past lives as women in eras of time, you probably can imagine what I'm going to say, who had uh, female past lives of restriction. They had to marry within their station in life. They had to, in the past life, they were disallowed from using their skills, whether it's writing skills, teaching skills, healer skills, and that that age-old trauma that has existed in our culture on this planet needs to be shattered, if you will, needs to be shattered in life today. I don't tell clients to, you know, they, I don't know what past life they're going to discover. They often find a past life where someone in their life said, you can't be with that person because that person is, we might say, from on the other side of the tracks. And how does this knowledge help them in their current lives? Oh, they, they, they understand the reason they hold back. They realize they're not holding back because of current life. They're holding back because of past life. And of course, they have to use their own, you know, perseverance, tenacity to move forward, but to not let themselves be held back by their past fears and past traumas. That's extremely common in our culture of today. I mean, there I think one of the reasons, one of the reasons among many of why I love regression is I have no idea what's going to come forward in the regression. It is not, as you, I'm sure you probably know, it's not my my job to find the content. It's my job to support the client. They often find that someone in the past life where either that soul, that someone died young or the reverse, my client died young and left that child, that sibling, that life partner, whatever behind in life today, that soul comes back into their life as a friend, as a grandchild, as their parent, whatever it might be. There's just so much continuity between our past and our present that it explains emotions. We don't understand why we have those emotions. They're not from current life. There's not anything wrong with us that we have that that worry, that fear, it comes from before. And so we, we release it by knowing about it in the past life.
absolutely beautifully said and this is so so important and we'll, we will talk more in a moment about the importance of well having a past life regression if possible or accessing that information because it can be pretty much a, a game changer and as i said in my introduction you have recognized that past life regression therapy is an excellent cutting edge modality in psychotherapy I mean, there are so many people having so many problems, so many issues, emotional, psychological issues that are impacting on their lives. So if we can address those through such a modality, and I call it modality, I guess, then, well, everyone should take an opportunity <laughs> to access this. Now, you've um, talked briefly about free will karma, destiny, and these are such important aspects of how our life really works that I just would like to reiterate a couple of points. In your recent interview with George Nori on Beyond Belief on Gaia, you said something very profound and important, which deeply resonated with me. And so I would like to bring it up. When asked whether this work that you are now doing was predetermined by your soul, you said the opportunity was predetermined. The choice was mine. This insight is really important as it goes right into the difference between the free will, dharma, karma, and destiny, and more specifically to the blueprint for our incarnation that we bring into this life and what we decide to do with it which is hugely important concept for us to understand. Because, once again, the more we understand how this works, the more informed and conscious decisions we can make, as opposed to driving on automatic. And so this was just so beautiful when I heard you say that the opportunity was predetermined, the choice was mine. Could you just elaborate on on that because this is such a hugely important aspect yeah i want to say wow because that's a really you're so right uh, that that is such a uh, a crucial concept uh, the the bottom line yeah um and i think the absolute bottom line in these human bodies is choice we are given intelligence now granted there's different levels of intelligence but we're given awareness and intelligence our destiny is our choice our evolution is our choice and you know we live <laughs> so much to say here we live with various various religious teachings we live with various teachings from our parents and our grandparents and teachers and mentors and et cetera, et cetera. If each of us does not take charge of our own life and our own destiny, then in my opinion, we don't evolve as a soul, but humanity doesn't evolve. So, I mean, would it have been perfectly okay if, you know, you know, me with this fancy title because I'm a psychologist of you know license in the United States. If you know Dr. Linda Backman continued being a conventional psychologist, well, sure, I, that would have been okay. Um, and there are other aspects of my life that are important, like my friendships, my relationships. I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, all of that is is very, very important. But this option was presented to me, in my opinion, by my guides. And then I choose whether to take it or not. The I, I think what that speaks to for all of us, and you know, I want to say, please, listeners, don't think you have to be doctor anything. We're all we're, we're all doctor something. In other words, we're all the best gardener in the world is the doctor of the garden, and the you know, the best chef of the world is the doctor cook or whatever. We have to take charge. I believe this so deeply. We have to take charge of our traumas, our passions, our life in order to evolve and evolve humanity. 
And sometimes that's not easy. Yeah. Sometimes it's terribly difficult. I, I mean, I certainly had conventional people years ago, especially my referral sources back in my conventional psychology days, my referral sources that were medical doctors, you know, thinking or saying, Dr. Linda Backman, what are you doing moving into regression? What, what, what kind of craziness is this? And so I say to people, follow your passions, follow your heart. Don't ignore your head. We need that cognitive ability as a processing agent, if you will, but follow where you're led. If that relationship hasn't been working for 15 years, (laughs) either get some help and see if you can improve the relationship or end that friendship or romantic relationship or whatever it is, because you know how it works, Anna. It's like, sometimes if we don't close one door, the next door does not open. We have to be brave enough to close one door. So you can tell you've, you've really asked a, a, a pithy question that I have a lot of strong feelings about. Yes. Thank you. At another level of understanding of this concept, a lot of people that I've been working with in my quantum coaching work, my clients have difficulty to reconcile the notion of free will and destiny, just broadly speaking, because they say, okay, if I have a destiny that I have to go through, then what free will do I have because I have to go through destiny? So to many people, these are two mutually exclusive concepts. I either have free will or I have destiny and karma. I can't have both. I've been struggling myself to reconcile those two concepts until quite recently, and that was only, I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago, literally two, three years ago. In my meditation, I got the insight that perfectly reconciles those two concepts. So when all the spiritual teachings and sources say, we all have free will, we always have free will. Yes. But here is the qualifier. We have free will as a soul or at the soul level in between incarnations. And then we have free will during incarnation, you know, in human form or in any other form we choose to reincarnate to. And the difference is our free will at the soul level is the soul free will. So we can design and choose the blueprint for our next incarnation, what lessons we want to learn, what key experience we want to have. So we have a 100% free will. Now, when we incarnate, when we are born, we still have free will, but that's the ego free will. And as an ego, we can choose what experiences we want to have and, and which not to have. In the whole cycle of life between lives, we have 100% free will, but the nature of that free will is different in between lives and during incarnations. So they are not mutually exclusive. We still have that choice during our life, which, as you said, and I completely agree, we need to exercise as best as we possibly can. And realizing that as a soul, we chose this particular scenario or we chose this particular, as I call it, blueprint. And as you beautifully put it, your work your or this pathway was predetermined, but the choice was yours. And I think this this so deeply resonated with me because it, be, it beautifully encapsulates the notion of the blueprint and the free will okay, how do I want to go through this blueprint in my life? Any thoughts on that? Uh, Just a couple of thoughts. Uh, One is, it's my understanding that if we are at earlier stages of evolution, as uh, earlier stages of soul evolution, that our guides are more involved in our life planning. And the farther along the journey of evolving as a soul, the more our guides are more hands-off in terms of our pre-planning of a life. But no, I agree with what you have described. 
we're presented with, I mean, we all know living human lives, we're all presented at different points in time with challenging choices or losses, or I'm currently teaching a virtual course about loss, loss of all types. And what do we do with those losses? And losses could be loss of job, loss of neighbor. It isn't just loss through through a, a human passing, loss of an animal, loss of a human. But what do we do? Uh, what kinds of human free will choices do we make when losses occur? And our guides just wait to see what we're going to choose to do. Yeah. Yes, so I guess our life still has so many mysteries that uh, we can only guess <laughs> uh, guess what they are, and perhaps some of them will remain a mystery. Perhaps you know we will never know in this current incarnation everything that there is to to know. And I absolutely agree with your point that um, because it, it resonates with me that the higher the level of the soul evolution, the less interference and guidance perhaps of the guides. It's like it's time to to remove the guiding wheels of your bike and off you go. Absolutely. <laughs> and let's see what you can do. Now, I've got another extremely interesting and curious question to ask uh, because, again, there are, I guess, potentially different answers to it. I understand that your work is mainly focused on the past lives and life between lives and connecting with our higher self. Right, exactly. What about the future and concurrent lives? How do you approach this difficult to, to grasp concept that all our soul experiences are happening in the now and are not on a linear timeline? So effectively, we can have a regression progression and sidegression. Now, I won't use the word transgression here, but a sidegression. Have any of your clients access their concurrent or future incarnations? Well, well, first, and I, I think you've made this clear, Anna, um, we evolve, our soul evolves in real time. Our soul evolves in what, as humans, we think of as real time. Um, uh, there are times when people say, well, in the spiritual realm, there is no time. So past, present, and future are all happening at once. Um, I honestly don't accept that concept because we are currently evolving day by day, month by month, year by year, and that's how our guides uh, guide us. In regard to uh, future lives, it's my understanding um, through client regression that our future lives are potential in what they may look like. But what in fact uh, what in fact happens in a future life or the details of a future life depend in large part on how we're living our current life so that, our future lives are not set in stone at this time. That That's my understanding. In terms of um, concurrent lives, which I absolutely believe happens, and we have concurrent incarnations primarily only when we're a, a fairly evolved soul. In other words, a young soul it's my understanding that a young soul, like on a scale of 10, a soul maybe uh, less than a, a, a six and below on a scale of 10, because it's energetically challenging to manage more than one incarnation, that it's only more experienced souls that have concurrent or what I call split incarnations. Um, but I do have clients on occasion, it's not very common, 
who are able to tap into, to become aware of their split incarnations and understand a bit about um, that other person, that other, that, and, and each incarnation. Um, so let's just, I'll just use myself as an example. So let's just say theoretically, Linda has a split incarnation and it's a man who lives in Germany. And so it doesn't mean we're both born on the same day or both die on the same day. It doesn't mean that at all. We also have different life plans. We work on different karma. We work on different um, evolutionary aspects of the totality of our soul. But that's pretty much how that works. Yeah, and it does make sense. So, Linda, what do you think is or could be the next phase of our spiritual evolution? For example, will we be able to shift our consciousness at will to other incarnations across all dimensions of space and time, then to come back to this one or not, whatever the case might be? What is your sense about where we are going in terms of? the evolution of humanity, of our consciousness, collective consciousness. Where are we going? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. I I think that if if each of us is accomplishing, um, relatively speaking, if each of us is accomplishing what our guides would consider uh, that we are evolving, then I think that not only are we evolving the culture of humanity Mm -hmm. and I would honestly, in my opinion, say the jury's still out as to whether that's happening. But I think as, as we evolve, hopefully, and and to be honest, it's very interesting because when you ask that question, I don't hear much from clients about what will be shifting in our uh, consciousness. One thing I do hear is that the higher realm, the guides of earth are going to be um, that their intention, and I think this is actually actively happening, that there will be more interplanetary souls and more angelic souls uh, coming to earth. More of those souls need to be prepared in order to cope with earth, that more advanced souls as interplanetary and as angelic will be coming to earth to try to push humanity's evolution. That I do hear a fair amount um, about. So there is hope for us and and I guess a positive future if we want to, to have it, if we have the right intention and, right. and make the right choices, obviously. Beautiful. So Linda, could you now tell us more about your work, your books, your services, courses, the Raven Heart Center, and obviously, I will include all the links in the show notes so that people can contact you, including the links to purchase your books, which I strongly, strongly recommend that people do, anyone that is interested in these topics. So could you please tell us about your work and your offerings? Yes, um, I am very actively guiding regression, both past life regression as just a a standalone a past life regression, as well as what I call between lives soul regression, um, the soul level regression. And um, I guide that on Zoom. And so uh, I, when COVID uh, arrived, um, I stopped traveling as much as I was traveling to guide clients. And so I work with clients in the U.S. and abroad and and guide regression um, pretty much week in and week out. Um, I also have virtual courses. Some I, I, So I train people in past life and between lives regression. I also uh, offer virtual courses that are live 
three, th- three, uh, we meet three times a month live. They're all recorded. So um, the bottom line is people can go to my website and um, see what type of virtual course I'm currently um, offering and, uh, and join our mailing list. And then they'll be uh, just receiving an email and know, you know, where I'm, what, what I'm teaching. Um, I will be in, in Paris next spring, giving a live uh, one day workshop. Uh, All that will be both on the website and in our emailings. So, yes. Lovely. So people pretty much from all over the world or anywhere in the world can access you and, and set up those sessions if they wish to and, and organize training and, and courses and access uh, that material. Beautiful. Well, in that time has caught up with us. We could be talking <laughs> for hours, I guess, because this is a, a bottomless, bottomless area of, of interest. What would be your key message or your message that you would like to leave our audience with? You know, I think I would say, Anna, um, trust that uh, you are intuitive. We are truly all intuitive. It took me a long time to understand that I was. Trust you are intuitive. Trust your passions, your inclinations. Um, move forward with how you're guided and what you have sort of dreamed of doing or have happened in your life, um, take charge of your life and and continue evolving in your life. Beautifully said. Thank you so much, Linda. Well, thank you so much for being on Quantum Living. It was such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a wonderful pleasure to talk and share and get to know you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you really loved it, please post a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to encourage others to listen to it. For the show notes and other podcast info, please go to my website at quantumliving.com.au forward slash podcast. And if you'd like to dive deeper into quantum living and explore how you could work with me, please contact me and I'd be delighted to help and support you on your quantum journey. I am your host, Anna Anderson. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of Quantum Living. Until then, keep your vibrations high and be well.